Well, hi, and welcome to my shop, and welcome to something really different, a car radio. I have not touched a car radio like this uh, since I was 12 years old, and somebody gave me a car radio to uh, take apart. And uh, believe me, it was a lot bigger than this one. It's kind of funny, actually. The, the radio was about the same size in the front, but it came out the back, and it was like, as I remember, it was a great big thing. So this one, this one, oh, there's a number there. I'm hoping to find some identifiers on it. So there's another number in ink. There's a number pressed into the chassis, and then there's a number in ink there. So that might be the key number. I have, I have no idea if you can get information about these. A lot of holes in the top of it here. I hope those aren't all tuning holes. Oh, I think they are. I think those are all holes into little tuning capacitors. Oh my gosh, all these two? No. Oh my gosh, yeah, they do look like it. Fooey on that. Ford. 12 volt negative ground. Okay, no, no questions about that. Design certified as complying with radiation requirements per FCC rules. Well, they're probably not talking about you know nuclear radiation they're probably just talking about uh, radio frequency radiation it's like an antenna tuner there lots of holes in the back here too hmm. that's the antenna the antenna plug so the complaint on this is not that it's not working it's that it fades out after about 10 minutes of operation and uh, you know, what do you think? You think there's vacuum tubes in there? I don't think so. 1968. That's when this was made. So I highly doubt there's vacuum tubes inside this. I think it's too small for that, too. But uh, pretty sure it's going to be a transistor unit. Um, and if I don't have any information, i got to figure out these wires back here. Now, I think we can uh, quickly figure out these are power wires. And we can probably assume these are all the speaker wires going out. And probably one ground, this black one, and then these are probably the front left, front right, rear left, rear right speaker lines, but can't be sure. Two of them are pinkish, one is white, one is colored. This could be the ground, I don't know. I'll have to sort that out, or if I can get some information about it, that'd be great. Um, it's got this sticker on the front here. This is the uh, inspect when they were manufacturing this radio. Slap the sticker on it, and then the guys checking it on the line were stamping it. So you can see test number and operator. Test number AM, and the operator RR passed it. FM, there's a stamp. Burn in burn-in so uh, so they played these for a while and then a functional test somebody pushed all the buttons and wiggled all the controls to make sure it was operating so you know what, what do you expect from a car manufacturer uh, this went through an assembly line uh, just like the cars do let's see okay it's got a the band switches here FM it shows AM there now so that's AM it shows FM over here so that's FM it says stereo on it and then it's got this thing. What is that? Oop, little high. What's this control here? You know what I think this is? I think in one position, these buttons will drive the pointer. In the other position, the buttons will remember the position. Let's, let's, let's try that and see if that's the case. So let's push one. OK, so you can see the pointer zoom over. Zoom over. Now, let's let's tune it to a spot. There. Put this this way. Push this button. No, no. Didn't remember anything, did it? I don't know what this button is. Big, great, big mechanical button. 
not mysterious. Yeah, I'm going to go see if I can find some information out about this before I do any more with it. Um, there's another there's another number there. Probably referring to this front piece, which almost looks like a cast. All right. So I'll take these numbers. It's made by Philco. And we'll see what I can find out. I, I also know what kind of car it came from. It came from a uh, 1968 Ford Mustang, and that'd be cool. I got the word Lincoln here also. Lincoln 68 Ford Mustang. I'm not sure what they mean by that. So that's what we'll do. I'm going to hunt down some info. Okay, so I hunted around the internet and I found out about this radio. Uh, there's a lot of these for sale, but no information about them at all. No schematic, no nothing. So. Whether it's out there somewhere on the internet, I'm not sure. Part of the problem in searching for this radio is there's a hundred million pictures of Ford Mustangs. Everybody who owns a Ford Mustang has uploaded 16,000 photos of it to the internet. So somewhere in those millions of photos is information about this radio, but good luck trying to find it. So probably, uh, Pictures of Mustang automobiles probably are next in line after cats. That's that's what I think. So what we're going to have to do here is we're just going to have to uh, think our way through this. I mean, it is just a radio, and I, there's no reason for me to try to power it up. I'm going to take it off this here. Thing here. There's no reason for me to try to power it up uh, because we already know what the complaint is, and it's going to be something like a capacitor or something like that in here almost certainly so we might as well get it open and uh, looks like this whole top piece comes off pretty easily and this one right here just a couple screws at the back here really keep a quarter inch uh, drive handy all the time. That'll do. It's not quite right, but I'll do. Looking a little dusty in there. Ooh. Wow, that's uh, sparkly stuff. It looks more like metal filings in there than anything. Ooh. That's not the happiest looking thing, is it? Now, the next step to get it apart, I try to take this, this outside plate off. Ooh, okay. Two screws there. Screw there. Uh, screw there. Hmm. This one's a different size, so I suspect it's nothing to do with taking this plate off. I think that's all we got to do. I don't see any other little bit of an issue about how this wire slides out of here. Have it. Look how they have that. Let me give you a little bit of a close up here because it's, it's kind of unusual what they've done. As soon as I can, as as I can find my stuff, there's my close up maker. Tech cameras. 
So when we look at this piece, and these wires come around the corner here, all done very neatly. And this clip, take a look at what's going on here. First, you can see this braid coming up and around. It loops under and comes up the back here behind them and then is soldered onto the chassis. Coming around it, up and across, solders onto this band. This band seems to be on this clip here. The wires just seem to be shoved down in behind. Why, why would they have done this? Rather odd arrangement. I don't know. I don't know what to think of that. It looks like though it'll just the wires will just slide out of this thing. You know why they did it? They did it because if they pass this if they pass this braided wire over the top of these to connect to here, it will lock these wires in. And when you take it apart, you won't be able to slide these wires out without desoldering these. So that's what they've done. They've simply enabled you to pop these wires out. Still not sure why they went and did all this. It's rather unusual. You know, I can understand if the braid wire, if this braid wire was soldered right onto the frame, but it's soldered onto a clip, and then the clip the clip is then clipped onto this bracket, and the bracket, you can see it's spot welded onto it. There's a very really strange way of doing that, but it's probably an assembly issue. Anyway, let's take it apart. Let's go to the next step. After all, what can go wrong? Oh, something going wrong there already. Let's, let's, let's take this one out. Let me pick up this screw here. I'll leave you on close up. It might be just a little out of focus at times, but this one I started undoing it and I could see these things get loose in behind, so I'm just going to leave it right now. Oh, this one's not on there. Oh yeah, yes it is. I just found a way to recess the screw back inside the uh, cabinet so the head doesn't stick out. On this side, all of them are like that. Kind of badly off focus, isn't it? What do you what do you see about it? Hey, that's not too bad. Yeah, I think this camera focuses at about two feet or so, foot and a half to two feet, something like that. So half a meter. There we go. So I've, I've taken out the, no, here's another one, this one here. I wonder if there isn't some website out there that specializes in automobile schematics, and I, I just didn't find it yet. Okay, this thing's kind of falling apart at this point, let's see. Hmm. No, you still can't take this piece off with this wire soldered onto. Oh, that's why there's a clip. Of course. I gotta declip that. That explains it all. Remove the clip with the braid bond wire. Yeah, proper term for these things are bond wires, these guys here. They're usually busy connecting together parts of electrical systems that don't carry current on purpose. Okay, so remove the bond. So where are we at here? Nothing underneath. A lot of screws into this bottom plate from above. So something is screwed to this plate, so I can't get the plate out of here that easy. This is not going to be that easy. It's pretty loose. Oh, 
but there's quite a bit of radio parts in there. These are uh, all clipped on here, so I can actually remove this back panel without uh, bending the wires much more. Pretty jammed up in there, wow. Lots of stuff. Well, I better get a photograph of this guy before I go too much further. Photographs I can do just a little better uh, focus job on. And a little handier uh, when I'm reassembling if I want to study the, the part layout. And I also have focus problems with my using my tablet here, so I have to I have to put on what I'm doing here. I have to hold this lens over the this big lens over the lens of the camera. Get a good focus on it here. So what I want to catch are those colored wires and uh, who's going where. There's four of them. White, red, green, and blue. There we go. Take a bit of a longer shot too here. Now let's repeat that. Okay, well I think the radio is inviting us to remove this back panel completely. So let's let's do that. Pull off these leads here. There's one. Two. Three. And come on. Number four. Number four is. Number four is hanging on. It's always one in a crowd, isn't there? Be careful where I grab here. Come on, I'm gonna break the board if I pull much harder. There it goes. You know, these things have been sitting here for so long that corrosion has built up and uh, here's another one another the last one here didn't see this one okay so hey there we go can't do much with it now that I got it off that's where the antenna goes in though so this must be the front end of the radio these look like antenna coils here um, quite the uh, transistor or something here. Something something with many, many leads coming out of it here. That, that's unusual. Look at that. Looks like a uh, transistor, but look at the number of leads coming out of it. I don't know what that is. Tuning control, some kind of adjustment here. Here's a well, I don't really see an IF in here, so I'm thinking this is just the front end of the radio, but, well, there's a, there, there's what could be an IF coil of some sort. Don't know. Let's put that aside. Now, where are we? So I'm thinking now we have to draw the entire radio out of the chassis and then reconnect it here on the bench and then start sorting out what's gone wrong with it. If I haven't really disasterized it by taking it apart first. And, uh... A little scary taking this on here. Now, what about taking the front off of it? Looks like the plastic bezel comes off easy enough. Ah, let's see if we get a different kind of screw here. Hope not. Oh, yeah, much longer screw. When I 
as a kid I did a lot of this, but I never had any intentions of putting it back together after. <laughs> so it's a little easier. Hmm. Wow, the last one's a Phillips. Why would they do that? What's the message there? Three hex and then a Phillips. I don't know. I don't know what the message is. The message is they couldn't sink this part uh, level flush, so they they used a uh, a flat, a flat like a, a, a tapered screw, and uh, I don't know. I don't know why. That's strange. But, uh, comes the bezel. That's easy enough to get off. So you can see more of that metallic stuff. How much you want to bet this radio was in the car while the car was being it worked on and a lot of metal grinding took place and all those filings flew around and managed to find their way in here. That's a little far-fetched. It's a little bit far-fetched because it looks like these filings, if that's what they are, Holy smokes. Nothing holding that anymore. Hey, this whole button arrangement came off. What happened to it? There it is. Okay. Well, we don't seem to have gotten too much further having taken that off. This appears to still be securely fastened to the front. And, you know, all this mechanics go back into the radio here. And then it's gonna be it's gonna be wired up. Now question is, have I already taken enough apart to figure out what's wrong with it? Ooh, not very likely at all. Oh my god, there's parts everywhere in this thing. I think this is going to be another long journey, <laughs> another long and painful journey. Here, let me give you a little bit of a better seat, I think, if I can. Not with that, I can't. Put you up in a balcony seat here. we do next here? Hmm. Well, this top board just come loose. The front part is loose. Yeah, you see, you know what? I think they made this so we can separate this whole radio now. I'm not doing something bad. Now, gotta be a little careful here because I got some, you know, a lot of power in this screwdriver. Gotta be sensitive to what I'm pushing against because I have no idea what it is. Now. Could be somebody watching this video going, hey, don't do that. <laughs> That's not what you do to a car radio. Well, you're going to watch me find out the hard way, I think. So I'm just wiggling the parts, looking for interference. I can see I can see one right away here that's interfering. Um, so there's no, you can't, you can't, you can't peel this apart. 
because of interferences in here. So it looks like this board is connected to this front plate here. This board is connected to this front plate. So it wants to travel with the front part of the radio. It's a component uh, screwed on right here. That's it's a heat sink on uh, some kind of uh, solid state thing there. So we don't want to take that off. It's not going to help us. I don't think. Oh my my! Looks like this light will come out of here. Ugh. Didn't look too good. And this, what's this? This this appears to be a clip here. Is that just another light? I thought this was the light. Oh, this might be the FM indicator. Or stereo indicator rather. That's probably what that is. This will be the uh, front panel light. Of course, there's only one power wire because the radio is bolted to the chassis and that's its other connection. So I shouldn't be looking for a plus and negative coming to this. This is, this is probably it. This is probably all that comes to it. This and then the chassis. Okay, put the light out. What's that reveal? Doesn't reveal much more. This is one piece all the way through here, so I can't open it up this way. There's something else clipped here. Up here, right in here. And that also looks like some kind of a light. I'm not sure what that is that's in there. Um, but I'm sure this has to separate here. This, is, this has got to come apart down here. Let's put a little more power on it. More power. I'm preparing my explanation to the car owner about why his car radio now doesn't work at all. <laughs> but the good thing is you can buy one of these for 35, 50 bucks, uh, hopefully working uh, off the internet. Okay, so what have we done here? Now we've moved this a little bit forward. How far? Oh, it's back in place again. How, how did that happen? Still got the same very significant interference over here. Um, and something is definitely holding it back quite strongly from coming out.
longer view of me manhandling this radio here. Maybe if it gets scared enough, it'll, uh, it'll just come apart. Well, maybe I should post this at this point and uh, wait to hear what people suggest before I do something really stupid here. As if I haven't already done something stupid. <laughs> what it is that's holding this thing together but it sure feels like a batch of wires that's what it feels like because of that kind of the springiness of it Yeah, I don't know what to do. Hey, I'll go work on some videos for a while. And maybe somebody's got some good pointers on uh, how to avoid uh, making a big mistake here, doing some damage, and yet getting this thing apart and figuring out what's wrong with it. You can put all those things together. See you on the next one.